A Case of Conscience is a science fiction novel by American writer James Blish, first published in 1958. It is the story of a Jesuit who investigates an alien race that has no religion yet has a perfect, innate sense of morality, a situation which conflicts with Catholic teaching. The story was originally published as a novella in 1953, and later extended to novel length, of which the first part is the original novella. The novel is the first part of Blish's thematic after such knowledge trilogy, it thus follows Dr. Mirabilis and both Black Easter and The Day After Judgment, two novellas that Blish viewed as together forming the third volume of the trilogy. Few science fiction stories of the time attempted religious themes, and still fewer did this with Catholicism. Another exception was Walter M. Miller Jr.'s Hugo Award winning post apocalyptic science fiction novel A Canticle for Leibowitz. Plot <inaudible> 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 Part 1 In 2049, Father Ramon Ruiz Sanchez of Peru, clerk regular of the Society of Jesus, is a member of a four-man team of scientists sent to the planet Lithia to determine if it can be opened to human contact. Ruiz Sanchez is a biologist and biochemist, and he serves as the team doctor. However, as a Jesuit, he has religious concerns as well. The planet is inhabited by a race of intelligent bipedal reptile-like creatures, the Lithians. Ruiz Sanchez has learned to speak their language to learn about them. While on a walking survey of the land, Cleaver, a physicist, has been poisoned by a plant, despite a protective suit, and he suffers badly. Ruiz Sanchez treats him and leaves to send a message to the others, Michaelis, a chemist, and Agronsky, a geologist. He is helped by Shtexa, a Lithian whom he has befriended, who then invites him to his house. This is an opportunity which Ruiz Sanchez cannot decline. No member of the team has been invited into Lithian living places before. The Lithians seem to have an ideal society, a utopia without crime, conflict, ignorance or want. Ruiz Sanchez is odd. When the team is reassembled, they compare their observations of the Lithians. Soon they will have to officially pronounce their verdict. Michaelis is open-minded and sympathetic to the Lithians. He also has learned their language and some of their customs. Agronsky is more insular in his outlook, but he sees no reason to consider the planet dangerous. When Cleaver revives, he reveals that he wants the place exploited, regardless of the Lithians' wishes. He has found enough pegmatite a source of lithium which is rare on Earth that a factory could be set up to supply Earth with lithium deuteride for nuclear weapons. Michaelis is for open trade. Agronsky is indifferent. Ruiz Sanchez makes a major declaration, he wants maximum quarantine. The information Shtexa revealed to him, added to what he already knew, convinces him that Lithia is nothing less than the work of Satan, a place deliberately constructed to show peace, logic, and understanding in the complete absence of God. Point for point, Ruiz Sanchez lists the facts about Lithia that directly attack Catholic teaching. Michaelis is mystified, but does point out that all the Lithian science he has learned, while perfectly logical, rests on highly questionable assumptions. It is as if it just came from nowhere. The team can come to no agreement. Ruiz Sanchez concludes that Cleaver's intentions will probably prevail and Lithian society will be exterminated. Despite his conclusions about the planet, he has a deep affection for the Lithians. As the humans board their ship to leave, Shtexa gives Ruiz Sanchez a gift. A sealed jar containing an egg. It is a son of Shtexa, to be raised on Earth and learn the ways of humans. At this point, the Jesuit solves a riddle which he has been pondering for some time, from Book 3 of Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce pp. 572-3, which proposes a complex case of marital morals, ending with the question. Has he hegemony and shall she submit? To the Church, neither. Yes. 
nor no is a morally satisfactory answer. Ruiz Sanchez sees that it is two questions, despite the omission of a comma between the two, so that the answer can be yes and no. Part 2 The egg hatches and grows into the individual Ectverchi. Like all lithians, he inherits knowledge from his father through his DNA. Earth society is based on the nuclear shelters of the 20th century, with most people living underground. Ectverchi is the proverbial firecracker in an anthill, he upends society and precipitates violence. Ruiz Sanchez has to go to Rome to face judgment. His conviction about Lithia is viewed as heresy, since he believes Satan has the power to create a planet. This is close to Manichaeism. He has an audience with the Pope himself to explain his beliefs. Pope Hadrian VIII, a logical and technologically aware Norwegian, points out two things Ruiz Sanchez missed. First, Lithia could have been a deception, not a creation. And second, Ruiz Sanchez could have done something about it, namely, perform an exorcism on the whole planet. The priest bows his head in shame that he has overlooked an obvious solution to his own case of conscience while he was absorbed in a book, Finnegan's Wake, which to all intents and purposes might have been dictated by the adversary himself. 628 pages of compulsive demoniac chatter. The Pope dismisses Ruiz Sanchez to purge his own soul and to return to the Church if and when he can. A violent mass riot breaks out, fomented by Ectverchi and made possible by the psychosis present in many of the citizens as a result of living in the «shelter state» an earlier reference to the «corridor riots of 1993 indicates that this is not the first time violence has burst out among the buried cities. During the riot, Agronsky dies as a result of being stung by one or more genetically modified honeybees. Ruiz Sanchez administers extreme unction, despite his almost faithless state. Ectverchi secretly boards a spaceship to Lithia. Michaelis and Ruiz Sanchez are taken to the Moon, where a new telescope has been assembled, based on a fundamental twist on the Hertel equations which makes it possible to see around normal space-time, as well as travel around it." So that the instrument presents a view of lithia in real-time, bypassing the delay caused by the speed of light. Cleaver is on lithia, setting up his reactors, but the physicist who invented the telescope technology believes he has found a fault in Cleaver's reasoning. There is a chance that the work will set off a chain reaction in the planet's rocks and destroy it. As they watch on the screen, Ruiz Sanchez pronounces an exorcism. The planet explodes, eliminating Cleaver and Ectverchi, but also Shtexa and all the things Ruiz Sanchez admired. It is left ambiguous whether the extinction of the Lithians is a result of Ruiz Sanchez's prayer or Cleaver's error. Topic reception While faulting the novel for «extreme unevenness», Galaxy reviewer Floyd C. Gale concluded that A Case of Conscience was «a provocative, serious, commendable work» and characterized it as «trailblaze-ing». Anthony Boucher found Blish's protagonist «a credible and moving figure» and praised the opening segment, however he faulted the later material for «loss-ing» focus and impact and «wander-ing» to an ending that seems «merely chaotic». In his «book's» column for the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, Damon Knight selected Blish's novel as one of the ten best science fiction books of the 1950s. He reviewed the novel as resonate ing with a note of its own, it is complete and perfect. On the other hand, B.R. Guy Consolmagno, S.J., the director of the Vatican Observatory, suggested that this novel was written without much knowledge of Jesuits, saying that its theology isn't only bad theology, it's not Jesuit theology. In a foreword, Blish mentions that he had heard objections the theology, but countered that the theology was that of a future church rather than the present one, and that in any case he set out to write about not a body of faith, but a man. 
he also received, and quoted, the official church policy on contact with extraterrestrial intelligent life forms. The policy described such life forms as being possibly without immortal souls, or having immortal souls and being fallen, or having souls and existing in a state of grace, listing the approach to be taken in each case. In 2012 the novel was included in the Library of America two-volume boxed set American science fiction, nine classic novels of the 1950s, edited by Gary K. Wolfe. Awards and nominations The novel won a Hugo Award in 1959. The original novella won a retrospective Hugo Award in 2004.